Greetings, friends and YouTubers. It's Chris here. It's Sunday, March 29th. So it's been a week since I uh, posted any videos. Uh, today I'm going to give a quick COVID-19 update uh, from where I'm sitting now. I've been uh, sheltering in place for the last week, so I haven't left my house but once. I left, uh, I went out Friday afternoon to the store to pick something up. But otherwise, I hadn't left my house since the previous Sunday. I do go out for my daily walks. So, and I advise you to make sure that you're getting some sunshine and fresh air uh, daily and just, get, you know, get a good stretch going. So I walk around the block with my kid and my dog. So a lot has happened in the last week. Uh, within Alaska, the case number has shot up to uh, at least 100, maybe more than 100 today. There's been one confirmed death in Alaska. We had a, a resident who died out of state uh, the week before. Uh, so, you know, obviously it's starting to hit home a little closer for, for Alaskans. Uh, and this week has been interesting because the, the COVID-19 obviously has, it's overshadowing everything and it's uh, having a fairly large impact on local economies, businesses as, as things shut down um, and people aren't able to do businesses or transact businesses the same, transact business the same way they were able to. In Alaska, we have, uh, we have compounding issues related to the oil war that's going on globally. And so the price of oil has dropped significantly over the last uh, three months. And we'll talk a little bit about, I'll show you about that. I'll show you some charts to show you where Alaska, Alaska's oil was, where it is now. And oil plays a huge part in the, uh, in the economics of Alaska. Our state government's dependent on it. Private industry is dependent on it. Uh, yeah, vir there's, not a, there's virtually no aspect of the state that isn't impacted in some way by uh, what the price of oil is doing and so uh, on top of the covid we also have that and there's a there's a there's another wrinkle re related to uh, not the covid 19 but the market in alaska and that is uh, the permanent fund dividend that is used uh, to send out annual distributions to alaska but also it's been used to fund state government in the past as the state government has had its own budget woes of late and this year, the, the permanent fund dividend that we all rely on for our annual distributions and essentially a payment to Alaskans to compensate for the, the, the resource wealth that is being uh, created uh, through the extraction of oil. So that's our share of the oil every year, essentially. And uh, the model for it is that royalties or revenues that are derived from oil paid to the state, land, some of it lands in this fund and the fund is then invested in a variety of different markets, whether it's equities or bonds, uh, investments. And so as, as you may know, the market's also tanky, taking a, a real hit this last month with equities down 30% uh, in some markets. So on top of COVID really dampening economic activity in Alaska, the price of oil uh, and just kicking us in the gut, uh, we also have our permanent fund dividend, which is a source of uh, significant value for Alaskans has itself taken a beating over this past month. So uh, definitely tough times uh, today and uh, probably in store for us for, for some time for the foreseeable future. But I want to talk a little bit about that today, show you some numbers, what it actually looks like, you know, when you, when you dig up some of these numbers. So that's what we're going to look at now. What we have here is data from the U.S. Energy Information Administration. You can see that they've got uh, oil price data per barrel that goes all the way back to the mid 70s, and you can see that oil tracked at uh, between 10 and 20 dollars for the better part of the 80s and the, the 90s even, and then picked up as we head into the the, the 2000s. And um, you know, who's to smell? Who, who, we won't speculate on what caused these prices to increase over time, but you can see it peaked up near 100 dollars per barrel for the better part of the, the 2010 period, which was uh, very favorable for Alaska, you can see uh, it took a sharp decline here in 2015, between 2015 and 2014, which I remember, and state government began, be, began to have a real funding problem for its own uh, operating budgets and other budgets right at this period, because oil dropped essentially in half at that point. And here we are per this chart, at the end of December 2019 with the price of oil at $59 per barrel um, and that was just three or four months ago depending on how you measure it and here we are today with Alaska North Slope West Coast oil 
pricing and this is a four day delay it's worth noting so if we look down here at the list you can see that this, this price is coming in at four days late it's likely to be lower given the recent downward trend with all the other uh, oil that's on the market so we went from uh, 59 to 26 within three months uh, and that's that's part of what's going to helping to crush the economy it certain certainly doesn't hurt so we have a, a significant amount of price pressure on the our oil additionally uh, we can look at, and I mentioned the Alaska Permanent Fund Corporation, and they manage they manage the fund. The fund is what provides Alaskans with an annual dividend, but it also provides funding to the state government. And so, uh, per their charts, it looks like at the end of 2019 they were tracking at a 60, 66 billion dollar uh, fund value, and that was at the end of 2019. Uh, they reported as of the end of February 2029, 20, so just a, a month or so ago. Uh, not even a month ago, they were coming in at 60, just under $65 billion, so they dropped about a billion dollars. But then if we look at today's prices, which are unaudited, but as of close of Thursday, we can see the value totals dropped even more significantly, right? So the difference between $66 billion and $60 billion is about just under 10, 10%, right? So they're seeing a lot of downward pressure, and, and I don't know where the allocation of the loss comes in but they are heavily invested in stocks you can see that's um, they have the highest allocation there and the stock market's down so it's reasonable to expect that so so that's uh that's part of our problem and you know when our problems are just like everybody else uh, everybody else's problems we just tend to have a few uh, where that we're juggling at the same time uh, the coronavirus really putting pressure on local economies, the oil price and the, the effect of the global oil war, war uh, on our price of oil. And then we have the dividend, which is used to fund both state government and provide an annual distribution to many Alaskans, many of whom need it. And they live in, uh, they live in remote locations or communities and they use that for fuel oil or, uh, or other, you know, just the cost to ship things in. So it will be a tough year. All right, so here we are at the state of Alaska's Department of Health and Social Services website. I get a they, they run a a uh, an alert that texts you when they have updates. So I do get those updates, and they're very good about sending them out once or twice a day at least. And so you can see here we're looking at the case counts and completed tests. Um, they they have it broken down by region of the state. You can see uh, from the beginning of the year when we had the the first case, which uh, was in southeast, uh, they've grown. Right, so the, the counts have grown. They haven't grown exponentially, which is great. And it seems like they've, they've uh, it's, it's slowed down this past week. So it's hard to say what, what that means, if it's lack of testing or if there's anything to the data. But what this is what the data looks like now. So you can see blue is represented by, uh, Anchorage is represented by blue. Green is the Matanuska Susitna Valley, which includes a, a, a small number, a, a lot, a large number of small towns. Uh, the Gulf Coast, the interior, and then southeast, which would include kind of the panhandle area down between Juneau, Ketchikan, um, Haines, Skagway, that part of the state, the rainforest part, I, I always like to think of it. So this is what the counts look like. So that's this week. That is a, a bit of a downer, obviously, but on the bright side, uh, when I did go to the store, the store seemed well stocked. There was a lot of people out and about. Um, yeah, it didn't seem as though uh, I live in Wasilla, and it certainly didn't seem like Wasilla was a ghost town, right? There was a lot going on. I saw a lot of delivery drivers uh, up and down my neighborhood, so I think uh, the delivery business is probably doing a brisk business right now. Uh, so it's not all bad, and we're headed into spring, so the days are getting longer, the temperatures are getting warmer here, which I'm definitely looking forward to, and that's something to look forward to. Uh, well, so thank, for, thank you for joining, uh, tune in again next week, give you another update, and uh, as always, uh, stay safe, take care, we'll see you next time.